Good morning, Parkway. Good morning, Parkway. Hey, uh, it's a privilege and an honor for us to get to sing to you, for you guys this morning to open the service. I was kind of reminiscing a little bit earlier, and I realized that about somewhere around 2005, we recorded a CD. I don't know how good your math is, but that tells me that's at least 16 years ago. And we've tried to uh, revive some of these songs that were uh, worth reviving. This is one we've always had a lot of fun with. It's called Swing Low. Swing low, swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me. Saw an angel working on a chariot wheel. Wasn't so particular about that chariot wheel. He just wanted to see how the chariot feel. Swing down chariot stopping, let me ride. Swing down chariot stopping, let me ride. Rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord. Calm and easy. I got a home on the other side. Well, 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 let me ride, swing down chariot, stop it, let me ride. Rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord, calm and easy. I've got a home on the other side. Swing down chariot, stop it, let me ride. Swing down chariot, stop it, let me ride. Rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord, calm and easy. I've got a home on the other side. Hey, good morning, or as Randy was saying, well, 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 well. <laughs> I hope you're awake. If you're not, uh, we'll let them do it again. It'll be great. Uh, I love that little slide they do at the end. I just blown away by that when they were practicing it, and then in the first service, and then again in the third, ser second service. Sorry, I count practice as an extra service there, but uh, we are so grateful to have you here with us this morning, whether you're joining us online or you're joining us in person. It really is um, our privilege to have you here. Uh, it's, it really is a privilege to be able to do life together, and I hope we don't ever take that for granted. Um, it's good to see one another here face to face, but also to be able to just carry one another's burdens and do life together. So well, let me be the first one. If not, I'm probably actually like the 50th one to say welcome to you this morning, but we really are glad that you're here. Just kind of lean over to your neighbor and say good morning. The other neighbor, kind of a good morning. Let them know that you're glad they're here this morning. Um, 
Just in case you didn't get the news, we do have a celebration. Uh, Andrew is, is not here with us this morning. Andrew and Summer had their baby on Thursday. So we're excited for the Phillips family. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I meant to mention that in the first service. Uh, but it is good to be able to rejoice with those who rejoice. And uh, so we're, we're thankful for them, praying for them as they get some time to get adjusted to, to be one more in the Phillips crew there. So we're excited for them. Um, we're going to open up with a word of prayer, and then we're going to continue on in worship. Would everybody stand with me really quick? That'd be great. All right, well, let's pray, and we'll, uh, we'll worship this morning. Father, you are so incredibly good. Um, we are so thankful for the good news and thankful for just another day to be alive and to be able to be here in your house. Lord, I pray that as we're here together, that we would encourage one another, that we would love you more, and that we would learn to love each other better. Lord, it really is great privilege to be able to share life with one another and to to do life together god i pray that uh, in this place that we would just fix our eyes on you and that worship would not be about us but that it would always be about you lord we thank you for the good news uh with the with with andrew and summer we th- we're so thankful for the new addition to their family where we just pray for great things there um, thank you for a chance to come alongside and rejoice together Lord, I pray that today uh, that we would set our eyes on you and that we would worship you in spirit and in truth. May you be the one that is honored today. And we love you and praise things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love. Thank you for the nail pierced hands. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb.
I will praise you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and lift up your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. He saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise when i think about the lord how he saved me how he raised me how he filled me with the holy ghost how he healed me to the uttermost when i think about the lord how he picked me up and turn me around how he placed my feet on solid ground it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise it makes me want to shout Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. It makes me want to shout. Father, you are so good this morning. You are worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our worship. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for saving us. In your name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Good morning, Parkway. I want to welcome all of you who are joining us in person and also online. So glad to have you together again worshiping. Today we're going to continue and finish our series that we've called Together. And God has really been doing a great work as we emphasize coming together into His house. 
as, a, as the Parkway family of God. He's, he's taught us some things. He's united us with some things. He stepped on our toes a little bit. So we, we shed some tears in this room over the last few weeks. We've, we've had moments of, ouch, that, that kind of hurt a little bit. Or we've had moments of, do I really believe that? Maybe I need to go home and pray through that and dig into God. God's word about that and see, is that really something that I believe? And we've spent some time celebrating moms a few weeks ago and had a great time elevating our moms. And then last week, we celebrated together, doing life together by celebrating our graduates. You know, I was at a, at a graduation last night, and we, we stood up and applauded our graduates because they worked hard. And we said, if you work hard, graduates, and you, and you do, do the hard work, and you study hard, and you go learn a skill, and you, you dedicate yourself, then you can be anything that you want to be. And we stood up and applauded the hard work that they've done over the last 12 years of their life. But I want to tell you today that the opposite is also true. Sometimes the best blessings are not what you earn, but sometimes the best blessings of what's given to you freely that you didn't earn. Sometimes the greatest gift is when it's a surprise, you get this. You don't deserve this. You didn't do anything to deserve it or to earn it, but I'm going to give you a free gift, and it's going to be great, better than you can possibly imagine, and that is better than earning it when you get it free. Let me show you what I mean. If you have your Bibles, turn to, to 1 Peter chapter 2, and we're going to start looking at verse 9, and I want you to look that this is a free gift from God, that God has called us to be something. He has called us to not just be individuals that are out doing life on our own. He has not called us to go and just to do our own thing when we want it and how we want it, and I'm going to live my life on my terms. He has actually called us, you and I, each one of us, and he's chosen us for something incredible. Let's look at it together. Look at what God has chosen you to be. First Peter Chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness and into His wonderful light. That's quite a list, isn't it? That's a quite a list of things that you've been chosen to be, that God has called us to be. Let's look at them. The first thing that you notice is that we are a chosen people. We're a people. That means that we weren't individuals anymore. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter what culture you're from or what race you are or what language you speak. You have been chosen to come out of that background and to unite together into the people that God wants you to be. He's chosen us to be similar and together in our likeness. He's chosen us to be all because we're selected that he has picked us to be different. And he says, come out of what you used to be, whatever it is. And he has something planned for us to unite us as a people the people of God. Put away the past. Forget about what you used to think. Forget about what you were taught or what someone else told you that you should be. And God has chosen you to be something different. The next thing that we are is a royal priesthood. Priesthood meaning we're doing things that matter, things that are beyond this world. The things that we're focusing on is not elevating ourselves or getting what we can get from this world, but instead we're doing about God's business. We're working on things and focusing on things that matter forever, things from eternity, things that matter tomorrow, that we're doing things for God because he's called us to do that. And notice the word royal. We're not just doing priestly things, but we are royalty, elevated in status, above others, because we're elevated by God. And we're royalty, why? Because we've been chosen by the king. And if you're chosen by the king to be part of his family, you know what that makes you? It makes you a prince. It makes you a princess. What little girl doesn't grow up wanting to be a princess? They imitate them. We watch them on TV. We go to theme parks that are based on them. They dress up like a princess. I want to tell you that you are chosen by God to be a royal priesthood. You are a prince, 
and you are a princess. Think about the, the royalty of England. They didn't do anything to be a part of that family. They were just born into it. They were not selected because they were worthy. They were not selected because they've, they've been brave in battle. They weren't selected to be part of the royal family because they had some kind of quality in them that someone said, you are worthy of royalty. Instead, they're just born into it. Some of them are great, some were not. But the royalty. You were chosen to be a part of God's family. You are a royal priesthood, not because you deserve it. Not because you've done anything of merit. Not because anyone has looked inside of you and said, you're special. You're so special that you're going to be elevated to be royalty with God. No, that's not it. We are chosen by God to be royalty because of his goodness and because of his love. He looked at you and he elevated you because that's how great that he is. We're also a holy nation. The word holy means that we are to be different. Holy means separate. You're to be set apart. And we as a people of God are supposed to be different than everybody else. That means that we can't think the way that other people think. We're called to not do what other people do. That we are called to be different from the world, set apart for a purpose. And we've been chosen to be that. How are you doing with that? Are you different? Are you believing what the world tells you to believe? Are you going down the path that the world tells you that's okay and that's right and that's normal and that's just how it is these days? Or are you set apart based on what God has called you to be, based on what his word tells, us, tells you to believe, living the life that God has called you to live? Are you a royal priesthood, elevated in status because you belong to the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. We're also to belong to God. That means that we are adopted into his family. And when you're adopted into God's family, it's forever. Do you know somebody who's adopted? Someone who didn't have a family and someone said, I'm going to make room for you in my family. And when you adopt them, what happens? They change their name. They're now a full-fledged member of of that family with all the rights and all the privileges would come with being adopted into that family. That means the inheritance, when, when the parents are gone, the inheritance is coming their way because they're entitled, because they're a full-fledged member of that family. When, when that parent gets older and decisions have to be made about you know, how they're going to spend the rest of their life and at the end of their life, who makes that decision? That child that was adopted has all legal rights. To make those decisions for their loved ones. When you are adopted into God's family, you are a part of his family. Sometimes in, we'll go through stages of our life when we get angry at God. And we will yell at him. God, it's not fair. Why is life this way? God, I wish it wasn't that way. And we will shake our fist at God. But in that moment, you, are, you don't cease being a child of God. You're an angry child of God. You're angry. But you still belong to him. Some of you could give stories about seasons of your life when you ran from God. You were as far away from Him as possible. You didn't talk to Him. You didn't pray to Him. You didn't read His Word. But you did not stop being a child of God. You are a wayward child of God. And people prayed for you. And they prayed for you until one day God got a hold of your heart and you recommitted yourself and you surrendered yourself to Him. But you never stopped being part of His family because He has chosen you. For something incredible. Something that you don't even deserve. Something that there's no merit in you to warrant any of that. And the goodness and the loving graciousness of God. He chose you. And adopted you into his family forever. And the last thing this verse says is that we are to proclaim his goodness. That means that wherever we go, we proclaim his goodness. Whatever you do, you are proclaiming the goodness of God. It's not about living for you. It is about living for his glory and his honor in all that you do. He has chosen you to represent him. Think about that. He has chosen you to represent him wherever you go. You are an ambassador for Christ. When I was growing up, and I used to go to church when I was little, we had this program that was called Royal Ambassadors. Anybody remember that? Yeah? 
All I remember about Royal Ambassadors is it was too long to say, so they shortened it and called it RAs. That I could remember. I want to go to RAs this week. And we would go to RAs, and we would learn a little bit. Then we went and played football in the, in the yard. That was great. I loved that. I couldn't wait for the football. I had to suffer through a little bit of learning so I could get to the football because we would go play in the front yard. But RAs was something that I did. As a matter of fact, I think I might even remember the pledge that we said. And until this morning, I hadn't thought about it for about 20 years, maybe 30 years. I'm not even going to confess that. I don't know how many years that is. Let me see if I remember. As a royal ambassador, I will do my best to become a well-informed, responsible follower of Christ, to have Christ-like concern for all people, to learn how the message of Christ is carried around the world, to work with others in sharing Christ, and to keep myself clean and healthy, mind and body. I did it. That's pretty good, right? That's indoctrination right there at its best. I don't know how, why I remember that, but you know that and the Boy Scout Oath is something that's stuck in my heart, and it's the foundation of what I believe. But I couldn't even say the word ambassador. I didn't know what that meant. An ambassador is someone who represents something. If there's, a, if there's an ambassador from the United States and he's going to go over to Kenya, he represents the United States in Kenya wherever he goes. He is elevated in status. They go, oh, that's the ambassador to the United States. And when they see him, they think of all of us, millions of people. He represents our great nation. Everything that he says represents us and reflects on us. Everything that he does represents us and reflects on us. And so what he does matters because he is a reflection of you and I as citizens of the United States. God has called each of us to be ambassadors for Christ. And wherever we go, we represent him. And whatever we do... We represent him. The things that we say and the things that we don't say, the things that we stand up for and the things that we refuse to stand up for, all of that, all of that reflects on him and his goodness. And he has called us, all of us, to represent his goodness to the rest of the world. What we do matters. How we live our life, it matters. And so we should be always reflecting and proclaiming his goodness. Now, that was a pretty big list right there. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, called by to be the people of God. How are we doing, church, with that list? You've been chosen to be that, but are you being that? His plan for you is to be all of that and more, and he's elevating you in status, not because you're worthy, but because he is so gracious and loving. And how are we doing with what God has called us to be? The second thing I want you to see in, in this verse of First Peter, probably the most important thing I'll say today is this. God chose you first. He chose you first. He looked at you in the midst of your rebellion and he chose you. And he said, I love you. He looked at you in the midst of your selfishness when you're doing life your way and on your terms. And he said, I choose you because I love you. When you're in the midst of doing life on your terms, God, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to read about you. I don't want to listen to you. He loved you. And he chose you first. Romans 5, 8 says this. It says this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know what that means? It means that we didn't do anything. We didn't clean ourselves up, and then God loved us. We didn't have to fix things for God to care about us. We didn't say, oh, I think I want to be a Christian today. How do I do that? That's not how it happened. While we were dead in our sin, completely lost, with no hope and no future, he looked at us in the midst of all of that, and he said, I choose you. I don't know why he would choose me. Do you know why he would choose you? Was there anything inside of you that, that was lovable? Was there anything inside of you that God would have been impressed with, but instead, instead of punishment, he gave forgiveness? When there was death, he gave life. When there was no hope, he gave a hope and a future. While we were still sinners, he loved us. He sent his son to die for us. 
the, the, the most precious gift that he had ever had. His one and only son sent him to the earth to live and to die, and he hung on a cross, and he died for you and for me while we were still sinners, rejecting him, ugly, selfish. He sent his most precious gift and gave him up on a cross for you and for me. He chose you. You know, I was growing up, I had these moments in PE class, sometimes at church, even sometimes in adult church volleyball, with that moment when there's a group of you together and someone has this great idea, hey, I know what would traumatize everybody in the room, let's pick teams. Johnny's going to be a captain, Sally's going to be a captain, and we're going to pick teams right here in front of everybody, and all of us had this same thought. We all said, please don't pick me last. I don't have to be first, but please don't pick me last. And you sit there mortified, dying inside as they start calling out names, and it's not yours, and you go, that's okay, I don't have to be first. You start looking around going, am I better than him? Am I better than her? Is this really going to happen right here in front of everybody? Am I going to be the last one picked? Am I going to realize that I am not worthy and my whole self-esteem is just going to crumble right here? And they start calling out names and they go, please, please don't pick me last. Please don't pick me last. And you're just, in, on the outside, you're cool, man. It's fine, whatever. But on the inside, you're dying inside. Somebody pick me. Please, somebody call my name. Somebody pick me. And then you hear your name, and you go, yes, yes, I'm picked, I'm chosen, they picked me, I'm not last, thank you, look around and suckers, no, I'm kidding, you're like, I'm sorry, but I, I'm so excited that I wasn't picked last, oh, thank you so much for choosing me, and your heart just leaps for a moment of excitement that somebody chose me. Listen, there was a time in your life when you were saying, I don't know why I'm last. I don't know why other people are having this great spiritual experience. God has obviously chose them. They're, they're, they're praising God with so much gusto. They're talking about reading his word and what it means. And, and their prayer life is great. And they're just, they're obviously, they're just connected with God. And I am sitting back and I don't know why I'm not like that. I sure wish somebody would pick me. I wish God would pick me. And then it happened. And I don't know where you were. You were in a church service or in VBS or talking to your parents or maybe driving in the car, listening to the radio. I've heard those testimonies. And all of a sudden, you feel and you hear God call to you, and he whispers your name. And your spirit inside said, yes, he called my name. I'm chosen. I'm chosen by Almighty God. I can't believe it. He chose me. I don't know why he would choose me, but I am so grateful. And I am so thankful that he would choose me. And the spirit inside of you leapt for joy. And you just couldn't wait to get on his team. And you couldn't wait to get involved. Because when God calls your name, and you know that you're chosen, there's some excitement that dwells up. You can't contain it. you got to get excited about, I am chosen for a royal priesthood. I'm a holy nation. I am separated. I am elevated, not because of me, but because of him and because he is so good and he is so gracious. How can I not shout his praises forever and ever? Thank you, God, for choosing me. And it makes you want to shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for all of your glory and your honor and your praise. Thank you for including me in that. It reminds me of a moment that what I would consider maybe it's the greatest moment in television history. You guys remember that Oprah Winfrey used to have a television show? And on that show, there was one time a year when she had her, her episode that she called Oprah's Favorite Things. And it was a lead up into Christmas. And it was supposed to tell you about great products out there that Oprah loves and that they would, you could buy them for your friends if you want to. And everybody wanted to be on the show during Oprah's favorite things because she gave free stuff to everybody in the audience. I mean, she would call people up, all these teachers. You get a vacation to Hawaii, and they would go crazy. 
You know, they're talking about perfume. Hey, everybody gets perfume. And they're like, okay, thanks, that's great. Where's the vacation? I want to go on the vacation, right? So she had these episodes. Everybody was trying to figure out, when could we go and be on Oprah's favorite things? If they film it in October, would it broadcast in December? Is that the time to go? So she was just moving around. It would be July or May or June. It's just because everybody would be a surprise. And when they found out, hey, this is the episode, they would go crazy. But there was this one episode that I remember. When Oprah gave everybody a car. I want you to watch a clip from that episode and watch the expression on people's face when they realized that they were chosen to receive a car. And then I want you to notice their reaction to each other with the other person receiving a car as well. Watch this episode of Oprah. Okay, right now, right now, everybody in the audience, now listen to me carefully is being given a special package, and I don't want you to open it. Do not shake it. Do not open. Do not open. Take the box and hold it in your lap. Do not open. And now here's the deal. Listen carefully. Inside one of these boxes is a key. Do not open it yet. If your box has a key, you will be the last person today to get one of those cute little G6s, Okay. Who will it be? Are you ready? Hold on. Are you ready? JR is back in our audio booth. I want, you know, JR, this calls for a drum roll. Cue the drum roll. All right, open your boxes. Open your boxes. One, two, three. Yes, that's the wildest. Absolutely. Can you, can you see the reaction? You're chosen to get a car. And they go, yay! And they celebrate. I can't believe I got a car. That car didn't change their life, and yet they are going crazy. You get a car, and she gets to announce, you get a car, and you get a car, and you get, everybody gets a car, and they're going crazy celebrating that moment that you were chosen for something. And they felt like it was just the most incredible moment of their life. Listen, I get to be Oprah for a second, and I get to tell you, look, the great news for you today is that although you don't deserve it, you are chosen. You're chosen. You're chosen. You're chosen. You're chosen. You're chosen. You're chosen. Everybody is chosen by him. Isn't that something to be excited about? Yes, you're chosen. Everybody gets forgiveness. Everybody gets chosen because he loves you and he wants you to be reconnected to him. That's the beauty of being chosen is that, is that it doesn't matter if it's the person next to you or you. You're chosen. If you were the only person on earth, he would, he would, he would chose you. He would send his son to die for you if you're the only one on earth. He loved you so much that he chose you because you are valuable to him. And now you have a hope. And now you have a future. Isn't that great? Isn't that something to celebrate and to be excited about? Is that he offers you forgiveness. He first chose you before you ever knew that you needed him. Before you ever knew that you wanted him. He looked down in your ugliness and your rebellion and your sin. And he said, I love you. I choose you. And the final thing I want you to see today is that unity brings forgiveness. There is unity in forgiveness. That we are united together, not as individuals, but as one body, as the body of Christ, as the Parkway family. Why? Because we 
have been forgiven. Look at verse 10 of 1 Peter 2.10. It says, Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. And once you had not received mercy, but now you've received mercy. He said, at one point, you weren't a people. You were just scattered individuals, lost as you could be. But now, you are a people of God. Why? Because you've got mercy. You've been shown mercy, and because of that, there's this shared experience between me and you where, where I've been forgiven, and you've been forgiven, and there's a bond there. Like, like a band of brothers, like guys who go into the army together, completely individuals from all over our country. They don't know each other. But veterans will tell you there's a bond that happens. And by the way, we're going to celebrate our veterans next week for Memorial Day. Hope you'll come be a part of that special service. But veterans will tell you there's a bond that happens when you go through a shared experience of battle and you become a band of brothers because of that unity that comes from a shared experience of war. I want to tell you there's unity that comes to, for me and you because we are forgiven. I'm forgiven. You're forgiven. You're forgiven, and because of that, we unify at the cross. There's unity at the cross, that all of us are equal at the cross. In that video, did you watch what happened when they found out that each other got a car? They said, oh, I got a car. Really? I got a car, too. Oh, you got a car? That's so great. Let's hug it out. And they hug strangers, perfect strangers, pre-COVID, you know. They hug perfect strangers. How come you and I can't look at each other and go, I got forgiveness. Really, you got forgiveness? Me too. I've been forgiven too. You've been forgiven? Yeah, oh, that's so great. Let's hug it out. And there's a bond there because we've been forgiven. I've been forgiven. You've been forgiven. You've been chosen. You've been chosen. We are all chosen. And because of that, there's unity in, in our lives together as we serve God here in the Parkway family. The fact that we are chosen as individuals unites us as a group. We owe him everything, guys. We deserve nothing. And he has given us everything. So today as we get ready to take communion, this will be a little different way. We've done communion several times. The first time we did communion, we came and got the elements, went back to our seat. All of us together in unison took the elements. Then two weeks ago, we took communion. We came as family and friend groups. And all over, there were pockets of people back in there, over here. And they circled up together, and they prayed together, and they took communion together. But today, the communion is you and God. Because he chose you. Not just me. Not the person next to you. The God of the universe chose you. You owe him everything. And so in this moment of communion, after I pray, there's going to be an opportunity for you to come forward. And if you're up on the track, there's some on the, on the sides of the track. But I'd like for you to come forward and you will take the element. And just like last time, there's two parts to it. You open it. There's one on top of the other, bread and juice, right? But you take them both. And then you're just going to pray on your own. You're going to take a few minutes to talk to your God out of gratitude that he chose you. And you can stand right here. I would encourage you if you're going to stand here to back up just a little bit so people can get around you. You can sit on the front row right here and pray. You can kneel and pray. There's rooms on the sides if you want to come over here. You can find some place to get alone with God for just a moment. You can go back to your seats. If you go back to your seats, you can sit and you can pray. I would encourage you to kneel. You can turn around and put knees on the ground, elbows on your chair. Very comfortable. Try it out. It's a great opportunity for you to come and have a few moments. And after you pray and you talk to your God, then you'll take the elements. Thank you, God, for your body that was broken for me. Thank you, God, for your blood that was shed on the cross for me. Don't wait for instructions from me or from the stage. This is your time to talk to your God. This is an open communion. That means you don't have to be a member of Parkway. But you do need to be a follower of Jesus to take this communion because you are participating in remembrance of what he's done for you. So if you are a follower of Jesus, we invite you to come and take this part of the moment. There's nothing in the back of the room. 
Because we want you to come to the cross. We want you to come to Jesus out of gratitude for what he's done for you. You are chosen, elevated in status, not because of you, but because of how great God is. If you bow with me, we're in a word of prayer. Father God, we come before you examining ourselves, saying, God, I messed up. I have chosen myself. I have been selfish and lived life on my terms. But today, God, I come realizing that I didn't choose you first. I didn't wake up one day and say, I, just, I want to be a Christian today. I wonder how I can do that. That's not, God, your spirit spoke to me, and you said, I choose you. And something inside of me said, yes. Yes, God. Yes, I will respond to that, God. Yes, I accept the gift. God, who has done for us what you've done? Nobody. Nobody has sacrificed themselves for us. Nobody has given them all, hung on a cross, died for us, suffered, excruciating pain. God, as the blood ran down that cross, the penalty was paid for our sins so that we can be forgiven. We can have a hope and a future. And for that, we celebrate you today, God. We remember, Jesus, what you have done. In these next few moments, Father, I pray that you would call us to the cross, that we would pray to you from our heart to your heart in gratitude and thankfulness that you first chose us. You gave us a hope and a future. And we worship your holy name as the people of God in this room. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As you continue to pray, there's no hurry. We've got plenty of time. There's going to be words on, we're going to be singing a song that's not for you to sing. It's for you to move and for you to respond to how God is leading you. This is the body and the blood of Jesus. Do this in remembrance of him. You move as God speaks.
Father God, we've come into your house in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we have worshiped your holy name. God, we've heard you speak to us, call to us, choose us. And I pray, Lord, that we would say yes to you. Thank you, God, for giving us a hope and a future. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. What good does it do for you to win a car? and then take the bus home? What good does it do for God to choose you and you celebrate that and you walk out of the room exactly the same that you were when you came in? What good does it do for him to offer you the great riches of the kingdom of heaven and then you say no? God has chosen you, but the response is you have to choose him back. He chose you first, no doubt about it, but you've got to reach out and take his hand. And you've got to say, I will accept that gift. And I will surrender it all to you. Have you done that? Have you surrendered it all to him? Are you, are you just a believer of Jesus? Or are you a follower of Jesus? It's a different level that God is calling you to. Oh, I wish you would just surrender it all today. I wish you could just take his hand today and say, I'm going to be everything that he has chosen and called me to be. If you need to make that decision, there'll be staff down front during this next invitation song. And we would love to talk to you about how to be a believer and a follower of Jesus. Or maybe you made that decision long ago and you've walked away and you've gone your own way doing your own thing and you say, today I want to be back doing what God has chosen me to be. And I need to rededicate my life. We would love to talk to you about that as well. If you have other prayer requests, staff here ready to pray with you. Or maybe you just need to pray there in your seat and talk to your God that's chose you. Maybe you need to rededicate your heart right there where you are. Maybe you need to celebrate that no matter where you go today, no matter what you do, that you do not walk alone. That God will be with you in the good times and the bad. Some of you are going through some difficult valley experiences right now. And I want to remind you that God is with you. Yahweh is with you. Elohim is with you, the one that created you and created this whole world. He is walking with you, right beside you. He'll even carry you if he has to. If that's what you need, he will pick you up and carry you through this valley. Whatever fire you're going through, God will be there. Let's celebrate that today. Father God, in these next few moments, I pray that you would speak to hearts and give us the courage to hear and to respond. Speak, Lord. Speak, God, to our hearts. And may we say yes to you again. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I ask that you stand where you are. And as God speaks to your heart, you move. When the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in When I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There is another in the fire Standing next to me, there was another in the waters, holding back the seas. Should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free, there is a cross that bears the burden where another died for me.
Should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either way, I will bow to the things of this world. And I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in a grave that holds nobody now the power lives in me there is another in the fire oh there is another in the fire oh i can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him i can hear the as the space between where it's been I can feel the ground shake beneath us As the prison walls cave in Nothing stands between us Nothing stands between There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. Hi, I'm Philip Smith. I'm with the uh, Pastor. Sur uh, sorry, I'm with the Music Search Committee. <laughs> Had Pastor Search Committee on my mind. That's because I want to thank Ralph Hurst and the our former Pastor Search Committee for providing resources to our committee. That's going to save us time uh, in this process of finding our next mu music minister. Um, we have a music minister survey that's available starting today. We're seeking everyone's input on that, and uh, we have online versions. You can see the QR code up here. Um, that'll be in, that's in several places, and it's one. We have several ways of you accessing and uh, completing this survey for us. So, uh, the, the online versions are. Prefer. We would rather have those if you can get access to uh, and do that online. It saves us a lot of time in having to manually enter all these results. So, uh, but we do also have paper uh, paper surveys that can be used. But the uh, if you as you noticed, we have a blue and uh, one that's in English and one that's in Spanish. 
uh, so that everyone can use that. And I uh, want to thank Amanda Edson and Rebecca Powell who, were, who worked to get all of this online process set up for us. Uh, it was, and it's, it's really neat, so it's going to be a, a good survey for you to access. Uh, we also will have a church email will be sent out today with links to the survey also online. And we'll have a reminder email June 3rd, uh, just to remind everybody in a week or so. And then the survey will close on June 6th, uh, which is two weeks from today. Uh, they're also out on the table uh, in the FLC lobby, uh, one of the many tables out there, uh, is also the, uh, the uh, handwritten paper surveys that you can fill out. We know that some people just don't have the availability of doing this online and we understand that we're encouraging that but uh, but we want you to complete the survey even if you have to use this, the paper form and submit those to us also so be sure and do that <clears throat> and the QR codes are also in your bulletin I think everyone knows but the QR codes all you do is uh, use the camera on your smartphone and focus it on it and it will automatically download the link to the website where you can go and take that that survey so um, in closing, I just want to mention some prayer requests. If you want to pray for something specific for our uh, music minister search committee at this time, uh, pray that the Holy Spirit will lead us through completion of the job description that we're working on, uh, that he'll lead us through posting the position on various webs websites that we're going to be placing that on. Uh, pray that he will be with us through the interview process and through candidate selection. Those are some specific things that you can pray for our committee on. And lastly, our prayer uh, is that the person God has chosen for Parkway, uh, that person's already chosen by him, and we know that. We just want to find that person and him to guide us there. We just pray that when we find that person, that it will be apparent to all of our Parkway family that uh, this is the person for Parkway, and it will all be... Uh, looking forward to that time. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. One of the things I've appreciated about the Pastor Search Committee and the Minister of Music Search Committee is their heart for prayer. Let us be faithful in staying with them to pray. I appreciate you sharing some very specific requests, and I've heard those. I'm sure others have made notes of those as well. And let's continue to lift them up. Exciting times that we're in right now. And speaking of excitement, Vacation Bible School is just barely over two weeks away, and it is time to get registered. So parents, please, today even, you can do that out in our lobby or game room area, but you can also do that online still. That process is wide open. I hope you're already thinking too, as I need to be, about who is it that we might invite, uh, maybe a neighbor, a uh, friend, someone there, someone at work, someone at the ballpark, be thinking about who you might invite to come and be a part. And please, speaking of prayer as we did earlier, be praying as the Lord moves through Vacation Bible School. would also mention that our prime timers have a little announcement that says here, we're back. Well, they never went away, I guarantee you that. Not far, but they are back, and they're going to really celebrate. They're going to Miss Patty's. Um, between here and uh, West Tennessee. Many, some of you have already been there before. And I don't know what age you have to be to be a prime timers, but if you love Miss Patty's, you might try to sneak your name onto their list that they have. Please be signing up today for that if you would. I think you have one more week, but I would encourage you to go ahead and get your name out there. We have another very important ministry that we'll launch over the next few weeks as well. It's entitled Grief Share, and as you would guess from hearing that title, it is about those who are going through the grief of losing loved ones. There's going to be more information to come on that. You can get, in fact, more as you go by the table uh, out in the lobby or game room area, but you can also get that online or call the office. We want to be able to help you in that, and like I say, you'll hear more in the coming weeks. And then uh, while I'm there in the 
uh, and the idea about grieving. There's someone you can be praying for uh, this weekend. Many of you already have been. Probably you've heard that longtime members, George and Linda Malahan, uh, have passed away between January and just these recent days. And so their daughter, Lindsay, who at one time was a member of Parkway as well, um, is experiencing a very tough time, as you might imagine. Today, uh, there is a graveside service at 3 o'clock over at Forest Lawn, for those of you who want that information. And then afterwards, they are going to the Millersville Recreation Center, and there will be a time of celebrating the lives of George and Linda uh, at that time as well. So thank you for praying for that family. This weekend has been busy with graduations, as many of you know. I'm sure uh, Brother Matt and Heather have been really focused on the uh, graduation of their son, Parker. But there's also something that happens today, a very special day, and Matt's mom's here. Somebody knows already. The cat's out of the bag. Brother Matt, it's happy birthday. Lori, team, help me out. We ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Brother Matt. Happy birthday to you. I'm sure I'm going to be getting my walking papers really soon for that one. Folks, had it been good to be here and worship our Lord together. Stand again. Let's do that one more time together through music. Lord, you're 